Hello, this is Michael with Function Tiles. And as we all know, yesterday, StageTop, the 3D printed tabletop, released their Wave 1 of digital printing files to all of their Kickstarter backers. And everyone's very excited, uh, and I've seen tons of people asking questions on the Facebook group, and people asking questions in Discord about starting settings and like a jumping off point. We, I, 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 you know, there's gonna be so many wildly different ways to print these nozzles, layer heights, uh, speeds, infills, uh, the, the, the information. Luckily, um, I was blessed to be in the tester group. So I've been printing these files for a few weeks now and I wanna w walk you through the jumping off point that I think will help you get started. Uh, this is this is kind of that intermediate level, so you can use this as kind of a baseline to rough in and dial in. There's going to be adjustments that you're going to need to do on your side almost always, uh, etc. But let me kind of just walk you through. Uh, this is a, a small guide, and, and that you can go to this link. I'll also include this link in the YouTube link. Um, right now, definitely the most amount of, of traffic and conversation. There's there's uh, there's a, a Discord for StageTop. And there's a Facebook uh, stage top group. So most of the questions, most of the collaboration is happening in the two layers. If you're not a member of either of those or only a member of one, I suggest that you definitely get involved in both of them because they both have a, a plethora of knowledge and people who are in the same sphere and who are going to be going through the same trials and tribulations you are. So let me kind of walk you through just this quick guide that I put together that you can access. And then I'll go through, uh, I'll bring up my slicer, which I use Prusa, and I'll go through the settings in my slicer and kind of talk you through what some of the things are, what they mean, what the reasoning is behind them. So layer height, uh, it's been said time and time and time again, these files were, were developed for 0.2 millimeter layer height with a dot for a, a, a 0.4 nozzle. That's what the stage top team used to test and develop and design. That is what the testers used to test 0.3, you know, a uh, 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 0.3 millimeter layer height has not been tested at any at any scale. Dot six nozzles have not been tested at any scale. I have seen some early posts on Facebook of people talking about some success that they've had, but they're, you know, it's it's still very early. Uh, in my testing, I didn't like the fit of the the tile lock, which is the piece which will go through the frame and actually snap into the play tile. I did not like the fitment of the tile lock to the play tile when using a 0.6 nozzle in the, the very few and small amount of tests that I did. So I just decided to swap on all dot four nozzles on my stuff and kind of just go with this and live in this 0.2 millimeter layer height. And when we have t more time and further time to test the other kind of t concepts and settings, maybe I'll go back to it. But for now, I'm sticking with layer height of 0.2 millimeters. Perimeters, this is the amount of walls that you're gonna use. Uh, I use I've always used three perimeter three perimeters in in Dungeon and Dragon scattered terrain and 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 uh, play tile like it, it, like dungeon tiles that I've used before. So I'm just sticking with three perimeters. Uh, a couple of the other testers have used three perimeters. This has been working well. I think most of the defaults are two. Uh, throwing in that extra one. The reason we throw one extra at least for for dungeon tiles and scattered terrain is for extra stability. So I think that one is worth it. Uh, infill. Grid worked. I did a lot of testing in grid. A rectilinear is something I'm I'm check I'm testing right now. I'm pretty happy with it. I think if uh, you know you should probably be using one of those other you know one of those uh, grid or rectilinear. Uh, infill percentage. Don't go le less than fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. I I printed some t uh, some legs in ten percent infill and was able to break the top away from the bottom. That was also the old leg design, but I'm just gonna say it. Don't try to slack anything less than 15% and cheat around it and save yourself a little bit of time and filament. I think it's worth it to be at 15%. Honestly, most of mine I'm printing at 25%. If you're asking for me and my personal settings and my slicer, I'm slicing at 25%. And I've even tested or, or I'm willing to kind of go up to 30%. Uh, we're gonna go to, most of your existing slicer settings should have a slow first layer print speed. It is kind of important, 30% of default, I think that's kind of slicer standard. You do want to make sure that you're printing that first layer, uh, that, that first layer relatively slow. 
uh, external perimeters first. Uh, external perimeters first is probably the most important setting to have uh, configured on. There, it's it's called external perimeters first in Prusa. It's called wall ordering outside to inside in Cura. This is probably the most critical thing to have configured on for your settings and. The, the, there's videos and that go way, way, way into detail, but basically is if you're printing parts on multiple printers, uh, especially if they're multiple printers of, the, of, of different types, you really want to make sure that you're doing outside first, uh, outside to inside. It reduces some of the, the squish components. It gives you the best chance for a dimensionally accurate part. And with stage top stuff, some of these tolerances are very close. So it's really, really important, especially if you're printing on multiple different types of printers. Turn that on. The only reason to really take it off is if you're going to have to print a piece, stage shop or not, that has really, really crazy overhangs or large overhangs. Then outside wall first is kind of problematic because it's it's got so much less support because it's printing outside first. So turn it on for all of your functional frame parts, all your flat parts, uh, the frame, the tile locks, the... Uh, I, I don't know about rails. I haven't I haven't messed with rails too much yet. Um, that's the only the only one part I haven't really printed yet. But for everything, your frame, your tile lock, your frame lock, your play tiles, you should definitely have external perimeters first. Top and bottom layers, you want to go with at least a three on minimum on top and bottom. You can go up to four four. You know, four bottom, four top, four, uh, maybe even five, five. I don't know how much further out, outside of that I would go. All those layers add add um, add rigidity and structure. Too many might make it hard to actually turn the, the frame locks in the seats. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know. But I, I've definitely been pretty okay with 3.3. Three. Uh, I've used white filament, and I've been a little, uh, a little, I've noticed that you can see the, infill patterns really really distinctly when you use a lighter filament and three uh, three bottom layers and three top layers so if you're using a lighter filament you may consider going with four bottom layers four top layers your top and bottom layer configuration also might might get a little bit different i'm going to do another video on adaptive layer height and variable layer height and that'll be important for the play tile and uh maybe for the rails for like the top of the rails we'll go into that later so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to that and hit the bell notification. Uh, so that way, when when I put that video out, you can uh, get a get a read on, on what I'm talking about when we talk about variable layer, layer height and how that'll really help with your your play tiles. So tips on specific parts: the frame. Uh, I recommend to print it in PET G. You can print it in anything you want. I have just found the best luck with PET G as far as the frame. Uh, if you're having adhesion problems, turn on brim. It's not hard to take the brim off of the frame. And with these wide, long, you know, the, with these thin, wide pieces, there, you know, I haven't had warping or adhesion problems with PET G. I have had warping and adhesion issues with PLA Meta. And I've had issues where I'm used to with PET G, I just, you know, the printer stops, I grab a part off the plate, I, I, I pop it off the plate. And then I set it down, and even with um, with these really square, wide, thin parts, I'm having to teach myself or train myself not to grab them off the bill plate right away. At least with my like when they come right off of my my Neptunes or my Sovols, when they when I a PLA meta piece or a PLA part uh, finishes, it's still relatively soft, and so let it cool on the bill plate. Let that let a let that frame cool on the build plate before you remove it because uh, that, that could be problematic. So if you can't print in PET G, print it in PLA plus, print it in PLA meta, print it in you know PLA, whatever whatever it is that you have. But if you can print the those functional parts in, in PET G, um, you know, go for it. The tile lock, uh, again, I recommend to print that in PET G. My experiments with PLA meta were pretty, were pretty sad. Uh, I didn't like how, they, how the tile locks worked uh, in those cases. Uh, don't use supports, brims, rafts, anything with the tile locks. It's just gonna mess you up. The frame locks, uh, right now I like them. These are very unvisible parts. I, 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 I like to print mine in PETG. You can print them in PLA or any other you know, material that's available to you. Uh, one of the cool things about that is you can actually, uh, with the frame locks, you can actually print a frame lock inside of your frame to save a little bit of printing time. The play tiles, 
those I want uh, you should you should probably print in PLA, uh, PLA Meta, PLA, PLA Plus. They are a very visible piece, and you're gonna get a better finish with the PLA, and it's it's gonna look a lot nicer. So consider using a brim. These wide thin parts can warp. Uh, taking the brim off isn't hard. Maybe play around with their, there's a there's an option called ironing, and what ironing does is it runs the nozzle. It'll finish that 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 top layer, and it'll actually run that hot nozzle without extruding any material over the surface. And depending on the desired finish or effect that you want, you may like the look of ironing, you may not look the uh, like uh, like of ironing, but maybe take a, there's like a one by one play tile. So in your testing, as you as you first kind of trying to figure out what visual likes that you like. Um, take a one by one tile and print one without ironing and print one with ironing and then see which one you like better and if you like the ironing better leave ironing on etc then if not disable it uh, the same can, the, the same thing could be said for rails or anything that has like a top surface that is visible to the eye when the table is assembled uh, I'm gonna make a few a future video on variable layer height uh, I use it with a um, my dungeon tiles right now and basically it allows you to change the layer height so you can print like a 0.3 or 0.4 layer height throughout most of the print but you can change it to 0.1 for the top surfaces which makes a really good effect on your top surface finish and that's really all you care about with a play tile so adaptive layer height variable layer height are, are going to be helpful tools in both uh, maximizing the print time and maximizing the quality for PLA tiles. I will do a full in-depth video on that later. Just subscribe to the channel and, and when, when I release that video, you can you can check it out. Uh, tips for Pet G. Uh, I'm definitely using hairspray on the build plate before each print, which I do with Pet G almost all the time. Make sure to clean your build plate between prints. Uh, you're gonna get some stringing with Pet G, even if you're tuned in really well. So having a kitchen torch or a lighter can really help with that stringing. I have a video already up on my channel about prepping a part for paint, which can all, you know can can give you a lot of um, can give you just a decent look at like how how you how to prep a part. So if you print it in you know if you print a frame in PETG and or a tile lock in PETG and you got some stringing, just run a kitchen torch over it. Uh, over I mean overall avoid over sanding on the frame parts on any of these parts that twist and fit. Don't over sand these parts. You can scuff them. You can you know knock off some some excess material, but since they are they are parts that are very functional and require turning and twisting and interlocking, uh, avoid over sanding if you're if you're preparing them and you are going to paint. Um, now we go to print ordering. So I know everyone's going wild and they're just trying to get a table up and and how many of this pieces of a print. I I. I can only advise you, don't worry so much about how many, you'll, you'll get there. Just print and print and print and print. But think about the order and with which you start printing because this can, you know, if you go and print a bunch of one part, if you just go print all of your frames and then you go and print all of your legs and then you put them together and realize that there's something wrong and that they're not matching up right, you're going to be a sad, sad boy uh, or girl. And in, in that case, what I recommend for print ordering is that you start with one frame piece, one tile lock, one frame lock, and one play tile. Pr a, a, a print a leg as well, right? In the, the leg, you can actually do something like, uh, you, you can use your slicer to just cut the leg, you know, to, to just the smallest part of the leg, which is only the screw that screws in. Print a small one of those before anything else and just make sure that that, that plugs in. I'll, I'll, create a video in the future showing you how to do that, but it's very easy. You open your slicer and you make a planer cut on the leg to just the part that you need to test the finish. So once you've printed you know, all of these pieces, uh, test your frame's overall finish, make sure that you like that. Check the connection between your tie lock and your frame. The tie lock should insert in, it should twist, it should seat firmly, and the play tile should be able to snap on top of that from the, from the top down. Um, check the connectivity between your frame the tile lock and the and the one by one play tile. So you should have your frame, your tile lock should insert up through one of the holes and you should put, you know, four or five, six, whatever, depending on the, you know, the, depending on the size of the play tile will determine how many tile locks will in the lock with it. Uh, the the play tile should snap connect to the tile lock. There's videos on the Facebook group of, uh, I think Ken and other testers are shaking their, their 
tables around and stuff like that, which is all the rage yesterday. Um, make sure that, that that fits because you may need to make adjustments to your tolerances or extrusion multipliers or any any sorts of things if if you if if that doesn't work if that doesn't work you really need to check the levelness of your printer uh check the frame rigidity to, you know check all the things that could could contribute to poor print quality um check your leg test piece make sure it screws firmly into the frame there shouldn't be any gaps there shouldn't be any play it shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to over twist it uh i've noticed some play when twisting a PLA meta leg into a pet G frame that I don't so much like and, and I'm working on my side as I'm still you know investigating some things of like well is is that something I did is it something that's just you know always going to happen between different materials so make sure that you especially if you are working with multi-materials make sure you twist something in you know twist your leg to uh, your your leg test piece in Make sure it seats firmly and, and test any scenarios that you're going to do. Like as if, if you're going to do half of your frames in PETG and half of your frames in PLA for whichever reason, I wouldn't recommend that. But make sure you, you test everything that you're going to do before you go and print out multiple, multiple, multiple copies of it. <laughs> you can waste a lot of filament in this stuff really, really, really fast. Um, another really important thing is if you've already printed a dice tower, make sure it slides into your frame. Um, there's... It's, it's a tight fit. It's been a tight fit for a lot of people. And if you printed your dice tower and you didn't do outside walls first and then you did your frame now, there's there's all sorts of complications. Basically, make sure your dice tower slides into the frame as it's intended by the design. If it doesn't, the easiest thing for you to do is just going to be to reprint the dice tower and, and downscale it before you print it. So if it's too big, you may need to go to like 90% downscale um, and, and you can use your slicer, you can use lychee slicer to do this, you can use uh, Prusa slicer to do this. If, uh, if you guys want to see, if you want a video or a tutorial video on how to just downsize something by a couple percent, um, comment and I'll, I'll upload a specific example, but it's, it's pretty easy and there's lots of existing guides in the net. Um, but if, you, if, you, if it doesn't slide in and doesn't fit, Go ahead and reprint your dice tower. It, trying to it, if you start resizing the frame and the tile lock and all that other stuff, it's just going to be a nightmare. Throw that dice tower away. Give it to a friend. Do something else with it. But just you know, make sure that the dice tower works. And you can also do a a, a a cut like so. You can do a planar cut in your slicer. Cut your dice tower to just one section of it, to, and then print that small little part and make sure that it that it fits within the tile frame, uh, within within the frame just in case you need to do another downsize or get the percentage right, right? Maybe you made it too small or, or too big, etc. Then place two of your frames together. You, you mean, if in your in your print order, you would have done one, one frame piece, print another frame piece. Once you've made sure the tile lock and the play tile works together, get your second frame, uh, uh, frame put together and there shouldn't be any warping or gaps. The frame lock should snugly, but not too snugly, twist in there no play and interlock nice and tight if you've tested the dice tower the frame the tie lock the frame lock and you know everything fits well then you should be pretty good and, and you know your, your stuff is dialed and you should be good to start going into rails and and leg feet and all the accessories and other things like that but you know get get these things right and if you need to downscale your dice tower um remember that and you know maybe in the future if you print a different version of the dice towers that are released or if you do a um, accessory you might need to adjust those files as well so keep that in mind this isn't an exact science um, so now I'm just going to kind of go through my slicer settings a lot of these points are going to be repeated I apologize uh, but I just kind of <clears throat> wanted to take you through that for the visual learners to take you through uh, the examples so in here's my just blank Prusa slicer setup. I have my print settings, my filament, and my, my printer indicated here. Uh, let's go ahead and let's load up a frame. Well, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and load up a frame. So now we've loaded our frame, which is probably the most important piece to start with and, and start getting around um, in into your slicer. So on layers and, and th these are, this is my personal settings on layers and per perimeters. 
the most important one is this option right here, external perimeters first. You wanna make sure that this is clicked on. Um, I go with the line seam position, uh, fuzzy skin should not be on. The only reason you'd ever wanna use fuzzy skin is for the dice tower anyways. Uh, I'm going with four top layers and three bottom layers for my, uh, my setting. I had been going with 3.3, but I wanted a, I'm using a lighter filament and I wanted a little bit more, uh, I wanted an extra layer on the top so that the it would offset the lightness of my um, filament. Uh, my personal settings, I had printed everything already at point two. I was starting to experiment with a 0.15 layer height for the first uh, for the first one, and I actually reversed it. See, that's where I messed it up. So just go with 0.2 layer height. Uh, I was I was I was messing with the setting, and I changed it. Um, just go with 0.2. 0.2 works. Uh, vertical shells perimeters this should be set to three infill uh, I'm going right now I'm, I, I've, I've used grade and, rect and, and rectilinear they both worked um, I'm preferring uh, rectilinear right now uh, I go with a 25 percent in uh, uh, 20 per, uh, 25 percent infill here's the setting that I was talking about earlier this is ironing uh, you can enable ironing on your play tiles there's not really a reason to use it for anything except for maybe uh, for play tiles, rails, uh, anything else that, that's visibly from the top down. I, I don't have it on right now because I don't need it to be on. It, it's going to take extra time and I would only really do it on visible pieces. Uh, all of my skirt and brim materials uh, stuff, this is all standard slicer stuff. Support. I, I'm set up for organic supports uh, if I do do organic supports. But as far as layers and perimeters, that's that's really everything else is kind of going to be like printer specific. But these are the important things that you should should look at when setting you up to print. For I'm working with two materials predominantly, and for PETG, my temperature settings are a little high, but they work for me. Uh, Two fifty at the nozzle and eighty at the bed. And with PLA Meta, I'm going with 208 for my first layer, 203 for all the other layers, and I'm running my bed temp at 55. PLA Meta is kind of new. It's like a low energy, uh, lower melting point than PLA, which means you need to drop your bed temp a little bit. Uh, but it's a really interesting material, and the finish is, is really awesome. And it's, it's good for uh, high-speed printers uh, because it's just it's easier to melt. So those are the, the two filament settings that I, I, I jump back and forth between two. And printer settings, these should all be very, very specific to your printer. Uh, make sure that your nozzle diameter is set for the nozzle type that you're using. Um, you might want to look at your layer height limits. Make sure that they're, oh, there was a mistake of mine. Mine should just be 0.2 and 0.3 right now. You can set these layer height limits for variable layer height later on if you uh, if if you need to, and those are just my retraction settings. I just need to save that. And so once you have gotten your settings right uh, to where you like them, make sure your part is on your build plate uh, for. Frame, for frames, I'm just throwing brim on there. It doesn't hurt, and as I said, these can these can warp. So, slice your frame up, throw it in your uh, throw it in your printer, print everything up, and uh, and see how and you know and then and see how everything fits and make sure that you guys get that right first and start and start there. Uh, so I will include in the video description. Uh, some information about uh, the, the like this guy, this roughly written guy. It's it, like eight in the morning. I've been printing. Uh, I apologize for the I've just I, I I'm only trying to get this out there because I just see, keep seeing question after question after question. It's a little late. I'm a little tired. And uh, hopefully this has been useful to you. If you have any questions, hit the comments. Uh, I'm you know my name is Caviel in the Discord channel. Uh, make sure that you check out the Discord channel if you haven't already. And uh, it's, it's a, a wealth of uh, knowledge and help and, and uh, you know, people who are, who are interested in this, in this product. And uh, 
I will sign off for now. Good luck on your printing adventures.